All right, check it out. Just picked up this Honda Foreman 450 with a plow and winch. You can see right there. Somebody painted it like camouflage, probably for hunting. Looks like the tire's flat right there. That tire's flat too. But that it's been sitting for like 10 years. As you can tell, it's pretty rusty. I don't know why people paint stuff like that. All the wheels are painted. Pretty complete though. Looks like it had a rack on the back at one point. Or something. But, uh, let's see what kind of plow is this. Looks pretty heavy duty. But yeah, 900 bucks, not too bad for a Honda 4x4. Has pull start as well. I'm not sure in the mileage, you'll have to check that, but I'm sure it's not too bad. <clears throat> Front brakes are locked up, so it's gonna be tough to uh, get off the trailer here. They have uh, hydraulic drum brakes on this thing. But let's get this thing off the trailer and uh, see if we can get it to run. All right, well here it is. The 1999 Honda Foreman 4x4 450 cc picked up for 900 bucks. You can see the uh, VIN. I think it's down here somewhere on this thing. Yeah, right there. You can see it says 1999 right there. So it comes with a plow and a winch. As you can see, it's pretty rusty, a little rough around the edges. Um, I've got the seat with it. It's out on the trailer. And I've got the air box cover. But you can see the air filters, seen better days, and the guys poured gas down it to start it a couple times. So it's definitely pretty rough. It does start up for a brief second, then die. So I'm guessing it's uh, not getting fuel somewhere. It only has 326 miles which is insane. I don't know how that's possible. But uh, let's see if we can start it up here. I'll probably turn it to up. Uh... There we go. And it rubs high and dies. So that's kind of what's going on with it. Um, I did put a little bit of gas down it just to ride it from the trailer to here, so that's probably why it starts up. But the guy said that when he tried to drain the gas out of the gas tank, uh, barely any gas came out. So he's thinking it's just a fuel related problem. The front brakes are locked up like I said before. Um, 4x4 I think works, the guy doesn't know for sure. It looks like the CV axles in there are in good shape, the boots aren't ripped or anything. So that's good. And he said reverse does work on it as well. This is the manual shift one, it's not the electric shift, the ES version. So it's just the S version, which I actually prefer because a lot of the ES versions uh, have problems with that electric shift. So I like this version better, so I was happy to see that that's what this was when I went and picked it up. And uh, I actually went and picked this up. It was up for 800 and I contacted the lady within the first five minutes, she said. I was the first one. And... Uh, it was an hour and 20 minute drive to where she was and uh, I was about halfway there and she contacted me and was like, oh, I've got guys offering $1,100 on it and people are saying it's worth 2000 the way it sits. So, you know, she wanted more money for it and uh, I, was, I thought for sure she was going to just sell it on me. But uh, I got there and we negotiated and... Uh, which really you shouldn't even have to because she said I could have it for 800 bucks. But uh, we came to an agreement of $900. I got this thing for 900 bucks. We'll see if the winch works here. I'm happy that it has such low miles, that's crazy. I didn't even check the mileage. But it looks like, let's see. Trip, yeah, that's just the odometer, so that's crazy. Let's see if the winch works here. Doesn't look like the winch works which might be a bad connection. I'm not sure if it's even hooked up to the battery. It 
doesn't look like it's even hooked up. Let's see. Got wires running there. Do do. Yeah, we'll have to work on this. But I bought this thing because it's supposed to snow like seven inches tomorrow. So the goal is to get this thing running and driving and it ready to plow before tomorrow. Right, let's vacuum some of the stuff out of here. <laughs> We can see the air filter is pretty rough in here. Looks like the guy probably broke it just so that he could get gas down it. Um, and that's not good. So let's take that out of here. We'll get that uh, all siphoned out. You can see a bunch of gas in there. So that's not good. Let's try to get this air filter box out of here. All right, let's take these plastics off to get to the gas tank. We'll see if the gas in there is good. There's like barely any gas in there. No gas is coming out of it. No gas whatsoever, you can see. Twisting this reserve on prime, nothing coming out. So either the gas line is clogged or the gas tank is clogged. Looks like a uh, little mouse was underneath here making a home at one point. So maybe it chewed up some wires. These look like they're for the uh, the winch, I'm guessing, going through. I think. Where did these go to? Yeah, it's just to a ground right there. There should be another wire coming back out for the positive. doesn't look like there is one connected to the battery for two positives so maybe that's what's going on unless I tapped into something up here but also did you notice it has a twist throttle on it kind of unique <laughs> it's like a racing four-wheeler kind of funny but we'll get this all cleaned up and then we'll see what's going on with the gas tank there's not much gas in this move that's why let's dump the gas out of the gas tank here see if that looks like Not much in there. Oh, it's really yellow. All right, we're gonna blow through the gas line right here with compressed air. So this is reserve, it looks like, and this is on. Or the other way around, that's reserve, this is on. Let's see if it blows through there. 
should. And it's blowing through. Try reserve here. That should be fixed. I mean, it's blowing through. Let's see if it is fixed. We'll fill her up with a little gas and then see if she works here. Then turn it to reserve. Gas is pouring out. Turn it to on. And I don't think it's filled up enough to be on, so. Reserve is working though. So that's fixed. And the choke. Let's see if that's working. You can see that's working pretty good. Choke on, choke off. All right, we got the carburetor free. Let's go over to the workbench and uh, see what's up with this thing. I don't think there's any gas in here though. I'm gonna take it off. Oh man, those screws are on there pretty good. This thing has definitely been sitting outside for a while. It was underneath the tarp, but still condensation can get to stuff, especially in Wisconsin. Oh man. I'm pretty sure the main reason it wasn't running properly was because of the no gas situation. Oh man, that one's gonna break off for sure. These are rusted on there. Oh man, I'm surprised they haven't broken. This one's really on there. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> if you see the corrosion on there, it's crazy. Look at that. Alright, let's see if the car's bad in here. Hopefully it's not all just disintegrated. Ooh, I can see some stuff falling out of it. Let's see, try not to break anything here. Ooh, yeah. She's a little rough in there. <laughs> yeah, looks like it was running ethanol. Turn green. So yeah, definitely need to be cleaned out. It's uh, a little bit rough. I've seen way worse, but 
everything's just kind of coated in that green. See the needle here. Oh, that's still uh, rubbery. So that's good. Float doesn't have any gas in it. That's good. Ooh, that was on there pretty tight. You can see it's just all gunk. That's completely plugged up. So even if we were getting gas to it, it probably wouldn't have started. Pile, it's gotta just be cake. Oh man. Pilot, yeah, that's uh, definitely plugged up. <laughs> so, savable here. Alright. Oh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Just gotta be careful getting it out. Don't wanna rip it. You can see right around here it wants to tear, so be careful. There we go, that's still rubbery. That's good. It doesn't look too bad. So gas never got to that, which is good. Otherwise it would have been wrecked. All right, let's clean this thing out, blow it out with the air compressor, and that we should be good to go. Let's just see what we're running for the uh, fuel screw here. How many turns in was that? One and a half, two, so two turns for the fuel screw. Take that out of there. And you're gonna have a little spring in there as well. Get that out. All right, we got the carburetor back on. Right there, air box back on, heat shield back on. All right, let's get the gas tank back on. And uh, we'll have to check for oil before we start it up. I don't wanna start it up with bad oil in it. And I'm guessing because this thing's been sitting for so long, it definitely does not have good oil in it. I wouldn't think. Let's see here, if there's anything in it. Ooh, it's pretty black. That is pretty black. It looks filled up though. At least there's oil in it. But could definitely use a change. You can see, I mean, that's, that's pretty black oil. So we'll probably change that out. But we can we can attempt to start it with that oil in it. If there wasn't any oil in it, then we'd have a problem. But, all right, let's see if she fires up. Put the choke on. All right, let's see here. It's neutral. Ooh, popping out of there. Hmm, might need two hands for this.
sick of dumping some gas out of the carburetor for some reason. Not sure what's up with that. Running good. I checked the little screw on the carburetor ball and that's tight, so must be the float height or something. Alright, so I think I figured out why the uh, carburetor was leaking. Stuck to the inside of the needle seat was a little piece of debris, so we got that out and I think that's going to fix the problem. We're going to put the carburetor back together and test it out, but uh, that was the main leak on it. Alright, so looking at the wires underneath here, I saw that this one right here went to ground, but then the other one went to ground as well back here. So I'm thinking this wire right here going to the winch is supposed to go to positive to the battery. It was ground out to the frame right here. So let's try to put that to positive and see if the winch works. Um, I'm just going to kind of touch it to it. I don't want it to blow up or anything. Let's just see what happens. Yep. <laughs> winch works. <laughs> So that is going to positive, not to negative. All right, watch the plow. Turn it on, let's see if it works here. Everything's hooked up. Out. Sweet. It's working good. So that is uh, one more fix. Let's get everything back together and then we're gonna work on the brakes. The front brakes are locked up pretty tight. All right, we got this thing jacked up. Let's get this wheel off of here. See, it's locked up tight. Doesn't move at all. <laughs> I wonder if we should just let the fluid out. Right there. Right now, she's moving. I cap that back off. The brakes still work. It's like there's too much pressure in there. All right, check this out. Brakes are fixed. Alright, brakes work and it rolls a lot easier, so just had to let some pressure out. And now the brake lever isn't so stiff. It's a little bit better. Alright, that's fixed. Let's move on to the next step. Alright, I'm going to try to get rid of this paint on the black right here. You can see it's all been painted, everything that was black.
All right, we'll let that work for a little bit and then we'll come back and uh, try to peel off some of this paint. All right, now we're gonna get a green pad out and uh, start scraping away at this paint. We already did this side. You can see that turned out pretty good. Black came back and then I got the sticker off right there, or all the paint off the sticker, I should say. But the black turned good. Now we just have the rest of it to do. This took me about 30 minutes, so we've got about two hours of peeling off paint here. This pad, the paint should come right off. With a little bit of force. And then we'll come back and take a rag and clean it all up. But Alright, another half an hour of work, and we got the whole back side done, and the right side. We still have to do that cover right there, but that's looking pretty good. Looking a lot better. Alright, we got pretty much everything done. We got the carburetor back on after uh, fixing that so it doesn't leak anymore. So that's good. Then we got the gas tank back on, the plastics back on, everything is pretty much done. Except the wheels. I'm going to work on that a uh, different day. I'm sick of uh, paint stripping. But as you can see, it looks pretty much brand new, the plastics do at least. Um, I'm still waiting for the cover right there to get done. But once that's done, I think it's going to be looking great. And then we just need a seat cover for the seat yet. Black one. We'll order up. But uh, this thing's going to be looking pretty sharp. Let's um, paint up the plow now. You can see it's all rusty. I've got some black paint. We're going to peel off the remaining paint like this. And then paint this thing up. All right, we're using some roll bar and chassis paint DHT. My favorite paint. Hopefully we have enough for it. All right, plow is all painted up. Looking pretty good. All right, she's pretty much done. We got the cover done over here, and then we got the cover done over here. So it's looking pretty good. Back to silver. But yeah, the plow is done. Everything is good to go. So let's see if this thing starts up again. All right, turn it to on. Should fire right up. Put it on uh, reserve here. And no beacon. That's good. All right, let's see if she moves. Running perfect. No smoke out the back. Running great. 
All right, so she's all ready for plowing tomorrow. Hopefully we get some snow so we can test this thing out. Stay tuned, it uh, should be pretty fun. All right, plow worked pretty well. One problem I had was when I hit a bump, this uh, chain right here snapped the bolt. So I think this thing is supposed to have springs, but I'm not positive. That was one problem, but uh, I fixed it and uh, did a couple driveways to and then it is over there, so. Worked out pretty well, cut my time in about half, so I'm pretty happy with that. And I just brought the shovel along, shoveled off like the patios and stuff like that. But otherwise, uh, I pushed all the snow to the back and then just push it to the sides. That was the easiest uh, way to go about doing that. But yeah, this thing ran perfectly. No issues whatsoever. All right, a couple days later, we got the seat cover on. Looking pretty good. And we got the wheels all stripped of the paint back to the silver color. So looking really, really good compared to what it was, I guess. But uh, yeah. She's almost complete. We just have the air filter coming and then this thing will be complete. So, there's the finished product. I'll do a quick side by side right here of the pictures. So you guys can see before and after. But uh, yeah, that's the finished product. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Till next time, we are out.